In this video, we are going to tackle how to parse a data structure in YAML as part of our journey into network automation with the Cisco DevNet Associate course. YAML is widely used in infrastructure as code tools and automation workflows, so understanding how to convert it into Python data structure is a key skill for anyone preparing for the DevNet exam or working with the modern network automation tools. I will walk you through a real-world example using YAML to represent network device information and then I will walk you through a Python script to parse and make use of that data. So as always you will find a link to the sample code and resources in the description below. So without further ado let's dive into it. So we have a couple of files, parse underscore yaml underscore devices dot pi and devices underscore inventory dot yaml as you can see on the screen. We are going to initially focus on the yaml file and explain the data structure behind it. So devices is the top level key in the yaml file and acts like the main category or dictionary key in Python. Everything underneath this key refers to a list of network devices. It's the starting point for organizing our structured data. In YAML, indentation matters a lot. So anything nested under devices must be indented properly to be recognized as part of it. So now let's move down the list. And this is the first item in the list of devices. The dash indicates a new item in a YAML list, like a bullet point, for example. Here, the name is a field that holds the value core router one, which identifies this particular device. In Python, this would become a dictionary with the key is the name and the value is the core router one. Moving down the list, we will find the type. And this is the key value pair under the first device. It tells us what kind of network device this is, and in this case, it is a router. Again, it is indented properly, so YAML knows it belongs to the core router one entry. The next one is the IP address, and this line specifies the management IP address of the device. It is a common field in any network inventory. It is used to identify how to remotely connect or monitor the device. Next is the location, and here we specify the physical or logical location of the device. This is incredibly helpful in real world environments where you need to track where each each switch or router physically lives. It could be a data center, a wiring closet, or a building floor, etc, etc. The next one is interfaces. And as you can see, this key begins a new nested list that will contain details about each network interface on the device. It is one of the most powerful aspect of YAML. It allows us to nest multiple levels of structured data to represent real world hierarchies. So the first item of that list is the name. And here we are entering a new sub list under interfaces. Each dash entry here represents a single interface. This particular interface is named gig ethernet 0 slash 0. If you are coming from a networking background, you will recognize this naming convention immediately. It is how Cisco labels physical ports. The next one is the IP address, and this is the IP address assigned to this particular or specific interface. It may or may not match the device's main IP, depending on how the network is configured. The next one is the status, and this shows the current operational status of the interface. It's marked as up, meaning it is active, and this field could easily be pulled dynamically from network monitoring tools or be used as a static reference. And as you can see on the screen, these lines describe the second interface on Core Router 1. Just like the first one, it has a name, an IP address, and a status. This one is down, which might mean it's administratively shut or physically disconnected. This mirrors how network engineers describe link status in real life. So at this point, this conclude the first device of our list. Now we start the second device in our top level devices list. It follows the same format as the first, making it consistent and easy to parse. And bear in mind, consistency is a big deal in YAML because it allows scripts to treat all items the same way. 
So again, this section is related to a switch that is located on a specific floor of a building, which could be part of a larger campus network. This switch has two active fast ethernet interfaces. These could be connected to user devices or access points or uplinks. Because they are both up, it suggests that this switch is operational and handling traffic. And again, you can see how readable this data is, not just to machines, but also to humans too. That's one of YAML's big biggest strengths over formats like XML or even JSON for infrastructure data. Now let's shift our focus into the Python code and feel free to create your own version of the code and explore different approaches from the one I have used here. However, it is important to first understand how this version of the code works. So with that in mind, let's break it down step by step. So if we start from the top, we will import YAML and this line imports the YAML module, which allows Python to read and understand YAML files. To use this line successfully, make sure the PyYAML library is installed in your Python environment. You can install it with pip install PyYAML if it's not already there. So we will start our code with the if underscore underscore name underscore underscore. And this is a standard Python idiom. It checks whether the script is being run directly as opposed to being imported as a module. If it is, then it runs the intended block of code that follows. This way, your function can be reused elsewhere, but the script can also still work as a standalone program. So under this block of code, we will create a variable called yaml underscore file. We specify the name of the yaml file we want to parse. And by the way, I have noticed that the inventory file is incorrect. So I'm going to rectify that quickly. And in this example, it is assumed to be in the same directory as the script. The next line, we are going to call a function called parse underscore yaml underscore config. And we also pass a variable to the path to our yaml file. And the returned dictionary is then saved in a variable called parsed underscore data. Next, we then take the parsed data and send it to the display underscore device underscore info function, which prints everything in a nicely structured format. Okay, so now let's move into our functions. So the first function that we have defined is a function called parse underscore yaml underscore config. The purpose of this function is to read a yaml file from the given file underscore path, and it returns its content as Python native data structures, typically dictionaries and lists. So creating this function will help you make your code modular and reusable. So for example, if you want to parse another yaml file later, you can call this function again instead of rewriting your code. The next line opens the file located at file underscore path in read mode. And the with statement is a context manager, which ensures the file is properly closed after it's been opened, even if an error occurs during processing the data. The open file is temporarily assigned to the variable file. Next, once the file is open, this line uses the yaml.safe underscore load function to safely read the content of the YAML file, and then it converts it into a Python dictionary or list structure, depending on the YAML content. So using the safe underscore load is recommended because it avoids potentially executing arbitrary Python code that could exist in a YAML file. And then after that, the YAML content is loaded and stored in the data variable. This line simply returns it to the part of the program that called the function. This makes the parsed content accessible for further use. So that concludes the first function. Now let's move into the second function, which is called display underscore device underscore info. So the main purpose of this function is to take the parsed YAML data now in a Python dictionary and display it in a clear, readable way. This function is entirely focused on presentation, turning structured data into human-friendly output. So the first thing that we need to do, we will need to begin a loop that goes through each device in the list stored under the device's key of the YAML data. We are using the dot get devices to avoid errors in case the key doesn't exist. Doing this, it is safely returns an empty list just in case if it's missing from the data dictionary. Next, we print the name of the device. 
The if before the string allows us to use the if strings. It's a modern Python feature for inserting variables into strings. The backslash n ensures there is a link break before each new device, and that would help the output look clean. And then after that, we will then print the type of the device, for example, a router or a switch, with the appropriate indentation as well to show the hierarchy and the structure. And then next, we will print the IP address of the current device, again intended to align nicely under the device name. And then we print where the device is located, as this helps to reinforce the idea that YAML can store metadata like location, which is useful in real-world network inventories. After that, we will then simply print the word interfaces to begin listing the interfaces for the current device. So again, we enter a nested loop for each device. We go through its list of interfaces. This allows us to dig deeper into the structure of the YAML file. So this line is doing something clever and concise. So for each interface, which is a dictionary, we iterate through its key value pairs and format them like the IP address that you see on the YAML file. Then we join all these pairs with commas and prepend the dash to indicate a list item. This gives us a single readable line per interface and you will see how it will look like when we print the interface. Finally, we print the formatted interface information. And with that being said, let's go ahead and execute our script and let's examine the output. So as you can see on the screen, we have printed a couple of devices. The first device represents the core router one and has its own attributes such as type, IP address, location, and all the active and inactive interfaces. And also the section below represents the data for the access switch one. And also, as you can see on the screen, we can see the type, the IP address, the location, and the interfaces underneath that switch or that device. So that's it for this video. I hope it was informative for you. If you found it helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn notification so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to drop a comment below. And to read more about this topic, be sure to check out my blog. You will find the link in the description below. And remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.